So here it is, the start of my new series. The one I've worked on a bit in advance, so that I have enough content to maintain my upload schedule, while being able to focus on any additional workload I'll have as a result of being on furloughed. Now this is a re-recorded intro. I just hit 2,500 subs a couple days ago. So given how popular my other anti-stasi series has been in comparison to my more recent variety content, and with how often this mission has been requested, and that's no understatement, Ever since I stopped playing Eddie Stasi, I've had comments asking me to play more up to this day. This video will be marked as the special for my 2500 sub milestone. I appreciate every single one of you who pressed that button, and equally, I appreciate any of you who sub from this series. While you're here, you might want to check out any of the variety of series I've done on Armor and on other games, as well as things like my Twitter, Discord server, and Twitch channel, all of which are linked in the description. I promise, other than outros and this one bit of the intro, I only plug that stuff in update videos, so you're not going to hear that again. Now if any of you remember back to the end of the last series, this mission quite literally did my nutting. I'd been at world level 10 for maybe 80% of the mission, and I'd experimented with all manner of tactics to get where I wanted to go, ranging from sneaking into outposts to detonate strategic buildings with demolition charges, to bombing runs in an A-10, to capturing an outpost with nothing but a clock, a couple grenades, and a dream to just smacking a tank into something and tearing everyone to shreds. So for this playthrough, the focus isn't going to be on taking out the military as soon as I can. I'm instead going to flip the scenario on its head, and work on gathering as much civilian support as possible, without attracting military attention. So I'll be doing pot noodle deliveries, assassinating military officers, sabotaging radio towers but not capturing them, and so on. I'm playing with all the same mods in the mission version I used last time, so this is a playthrough on anti 1.3.5, with enhanced movement, and the RHS suite of the AFRF, GREF, and USAF mods. Now, one more thing before we get started. I did pre-record a few weeks in anticipation of having less time in the week, so for the first six videos, I won't be able to take on board any recommendations or hints. That doesn't mean I won't reply to comments or that I won't want suggestions, I really enjoyed the times in the previous series where I used viewer suggestions to decide what to do next, so keep those comments coming in. And without further ado, and I'm glad I recorded so much walking around to do an intro with, I do hope you enjoy Andy Stasi series too. So as you can see, I've decided to spawn up here in the solar farm, which is an area that I spent quite a lot of time in. And now that I look at the map, I'm starting to remember just how big of a, uh, a mission this really is. Oh dear. Well, anyway, first things first, we need to get our hands on some gear. And I know exactly where to look. Funnily enough, I still had one of my old Sith loadouts. Yeah, this'll do. We need an off-road now. Now this is going to be a bit of an interesting one, given that I'm not actually going to be going after the military. So a lot of the time before I'd find that I'd push against the military, I'd get a high wall level, they'd get a ton of like free tanks and stuff, then I'd have to target more military structures to take those away, but hopefully they won't even progress to the point of deploying tanks. As I go along here, I don't know if capturing, well, you aren't, you're not capturing, but if towns deciding to support you contributes to your war level or not, I suppose we'll find out. I don't remember. But the hopes will be that we'll stay at a low war level for a large portion of the playthrough. So it'll be a lot of infantry on infantry rather than me with my RPG hid inside a building, waiting for an APC or a tank to turn up and then hope I can dismount the crew or at least disable the turret until I can sneak underneath it and kill the driver. But those of you who've seen me play this mission before probably know where I'm going and what I'm about to do. Oh, that's actually really close by. Hmm. I wouldn't want to do that with a vehicle full of supplies. But that's not a bad objective to begin with, that uh, refugee rescue right there. I mean, there's no enemies around right now. 
Let's have a hop over here and see if I can find them. Oh, wait, I remember. It doesn't necessarily mean they're in this building. It just means they're in this town, right? Let me see. Last room. Yeah. God, relearning this mission's going to be a hassle. Is that a, uh, a police car right there? Oh yeah, they're gonna be inside this building than I would've thought. Let's have a little nose around. Nothing in here. So, where else would they be? Across the road, maybe? Don't hit my car. I'm actually going to move out of the way before they decide to just drive into it. Or into me. We had quite hilarious troubles with, um, with AI drivers previously, so... I'm not going to push my luck with them. Right, this is going to be the last building I check, and then I'm just going to go. My guess is that because I was here when the objective spawned in, they haven't spawned in near me. Because I already had the area initialized. So yeah, once I take my spoils of war back to base, and then come back over here, they should have appeared. Our first roadblock. And we made it through without getting, uh, mowed to death by a machine gun. That's quite annoying, because that means we're gonna have to, uh, tackle that coming back through. On a low wall level, it's not so bad, but there is still a chance they'll recognize me. And I should start marking stuff. There's two military police there, so... I'll mark that as a possible location, and I'll make sure that I've got the roadblock mark still. In fact, I'll put my, uh, my waypoint over that, so I know how far away from it I am. But yes, I'm sure you can probably tell given it's the only thing on this road. I'm going up to this radio tower outpost here. And that's the reason I brought the off-road specifically, because I want to be able to pull the equipment box out of this outpost. And they don't care if you do this. As long as you don't get detected on your way in, you can get straight back out again with all that gear. And yes, I know this is a bit of an exploit, but I really don't care. We're going to be using exploits. That's just how it's going to be. This mission almost broke me the last time I played it. So I'm going to return the favor and I'm going to break it. Well, it doesn't need help breaking, but you know what I mean. Alright, there's the military. Try not to run them over. And we're in. Okay. So let's just park up near the box, positioned for a quick getaway. There's no dogs around, which is good. Load that, get back in. Easy as that. Okay, moment of truth. And we're good. So not only have we driven past that twice now, in a short space of time, which in itself is incredibly suspicious, but we have a great big military box of hardware in the back of our vehicle. But you know, who cares, just let them through. I feel like with how low the wall level's gonna be, with how we're gonna play this, this is something I'm gonna end up doing a lot whenever I need a resupply. Until, of course, I get to the point where I've got, like, unlimited M4s and M16s and whatever. Off of, like, the, uh, the local military. Hmm, which is interesting. We shouldn't see any of the actual US military for quite a while, then. Because to begin with, it's just, like, what appears to be the local army. And then NATO support comes in later on. Which are the guys in the, uh, the tanned uniforms with the big rigs. Alright, and here we are back at base. 
And I'm really liking how we still have all the buildings here. I remember last time I played that, um, I had that magical flooding fucking bunker. What did we call it? Houdini? I don't think I've seen this place with buildings in for forever. Can I get this thing out of the bag, please? There we go. I want to find out what it is that I've stolen. So we have shotguns, clocks. Oh, we've got light machine guns. Lots of explosives. A big bag. There's anti-tank mines. Was that 660 bullets there? 240 there. No, 2400, sorry. Yeah, a lot of stuff. So, all that goes in there. Let's get outfitted to go back and rescue those refugees. Okay, so I'm going with the shotgun here. We've got a bit of buckshot in this. Which is actually going to be pretty good because the military police don't have heavy armor. So if just one of the pallets catches them in the head, then that'll be enough. And I have an RPG. And it doesn't actually seem to have given me the pistol that I equipped. Why is that? Yeah, it's taken my pistol away from me. It's... done it again? Okay, I guess I'm not allowed to have a pistol. Oh, in fact, you know what I need to get into the habit of doing as well. I've done a thing. So now I need to come back here. And save. Because this mission can break at any time. And I don't even want to think about how many hours of progress I've lost previously to bugs breaking the mission. So not today, anti Stasi. Or not this playthrough at least. Playing this got me thinking as well, just like how many people who used to watch my stuff but stopped because they were only really here for anti Stasi are gonna come back. Because there used to be a ton of regulars who I'd have like comment conversations with all the time. It was good fun. So if you're like um, a returning regular or something, just, you know, drop me a comment, let me know you're back, it'd be good to hear from you all, and I've hit a wall. Well, you know, you're in the right place, don't you? I don't want to get out to fix it either, because I might not be able to go undercover again, unfortunately. Okay, let's get sleuthing. We've got to find ourselves some refugees. I thought that was parked up, to be honest. I'm not surprised, either. So that was the location I picked out as a possible, due to the uh, the military police grouped up outside a building. Let's try not to get exploded by Ural in the first 30 minutes. Hmm, they're not out there now. So where have they moved to? This guy just sat on top of that broken building. I'm hoping to get a glimpse of somebody through a window. Because that'll make this a lot easier on me. Oh yeah, and I shouldn't do stuff like that either. If I got much further away from the rod, I would have probably uh, lost my undercover status. God, where are they? There aren't even any military police about anymore. Are they in the back over there? Let's go have a look. I think this counts as a rod. I've turned around in here before on a pot noodle delivery. No, not in there. See, that's the whole point of having the vehicle spawn in the street, so you know which building it's in. Though, uh, clearly, it's not working to my advantage, is it? Oh, well done. Really, great job. Keep it up. Aha. I found one. Yeah, there's a few around here. Okay, this isn't too bad. This isn't a bad position to keep my vehicle parked up so I can get away easy. Once I've rescued them. Did he go down? Oh god, I hope so. Yeah, he's bleeding out now too. Alright, well we're not dead yet. 
The only issue is, they don't necessarily need to be in these buildings. This could have just been a clump of where the uh, patrols got stuck together. I'm pretty sure I hit him in the arm several times there. Alright, I've cleared a couple of the buildings around here where the, uh, the patrol clump was. And there's definitely no hostages. No refugees. Though according to my map, there's a lot of people pushing in around me right now. I know that most of those map markers are kind of bullshit, but... Yeah, I got shot through the wall there. I mean, he killed me through the window. He didn't die to a direct shotgun hit. Ah. Welcome back to Andy Stairs, I suppose. Alright, let's see what other kind of missions we can get. Like a, uh... Logistics? Oh, city supplies. I can do that. So let's drop an off-road in here. Can I load from this distance? I can. Alright. So, let's not take a shotgun this time. I'll take an AKM. Of course I'm going to want my RPG. Let's see if it'll actually let me take a pistol this time. Oh, it does as well. Perfect. It's not like I really need one, given that I've got an AK, but... It's the thought that counts. Oh, look at that, I went too far away from a rod. So now, what I have to do is take the box out of this off-road, put this off-road in the garage and get it back out again. Otherwise, I can never go undercover with it. And the garage is full. Yeah, that's going to be a problem. Garage access, what have we got? We've got Urals in here. Podnos, that's the artillery. Ah, oh, we've got an anti-aircraft gun. Stick that down there. Nope, I think my garage space is three. Three at wall level one, I think. So, let's keep the Urals in there. I'll drop this machine gun if it'll let me. It will not. Okay, Ural, can I sell this? Commander, sell vehicle. There we go. And finally, it will fit in the garage. Alright, so now I just need to deploy this out next to the box again. And hopefully, oh, for God's sake. Alright, I'm going to drop the box on the road. And then I'm going to try and spawn in the off-road right near the road. See if that works. If not, the mission's broken already, and I have to reload the game. Okay, I've dropped it all the way down there. It's actually near a road. It's not that far away from the box, actually. Reported or spotted by the enemy. Yeah, it's broken. So let's get this garage back up, I'll save my game, and then I'll restart the mission. So that was 40 minutes in. Well, that did not take long. At all.